Hello and welcome to Module 2, Lesson 1 of my multi-part series for Introduction to C-Sharp. In this lesson, I will be teaching you some of the fundamentals of C-Sharp. I will show you how to use some predefined types, and I may start explaining how to do expressions. So, in this lesson, instead of doing a form application like we did last time, we're going to actually create something called a console application. So to start, we'll go File new project console application we'll give it a name my first console app and then click OK now a console application is basically like a screen that has text in it. Let me just actually build this real quick to show you what it is. This is a console application. You'll notice it doesn't have buttons or anything fancy like that. It's just basically a screen with text and console applications are good for learning some basic syntax because there's no complicated overhead so I'm gonna start by showing you data types and then I'll explain what they're used for but you can think of a data type as kind of like a definition it defines how to store data so there's some common ones like the first one. Oh, by the way I'm using two forward slashes this is called a comment right here in C sharp you can include comments and they basically say whatever you type on this line the compiler will not interpret the program won't even notice it it'll just skip over it so I can type whatever I want and I can still go to debug and start without debugging and it just skips that line of code entirely so that's what comments are so back to data types you have the integer data type so if I ever want to store a number a whole number I would use an integer and integers can store numbers between the values of zero and I believe it's like six million and so that's what a integer data type is and again data types just kind of define what type of data you're going to be storing in the systems memory so you have the integer you have the double which is a decimal number between it can store I believe it's 23 levels of precision and then you have a float which is a decimal number as well but it only holds like 13 or 12 levels of precision you have the short which is stores a number between I believe 0 and 63,000 or something similar to that you have the f um, the bool which is a yes or no it's either on or off yes or no true or false that's what a boolean value is let's see you also have a char and now if you look at your keyboard basically any key you can type can be represented as a character or a char so chars hold a single character or a single item and that's really what a character is. So like a char could be the number 5 or the letter H or the character that is space. That's what a char is. It's a single character which is a number, symbol, letter, etc. And so then you have a string which is a collection of chars. Now a string is a collection of chars and that means like you could hold words, sentences, things like that inside of a string. And I'll be going over these more later on. Just know that they exist and kind of get a feel for what it is that they are. There's this other data type called a decimal and this is mostly only used for money and it's native to C sharp and the .NET framework. Like if you try to use another programming language I'm not sure how common this one is. And I think that's all we'll be going over for now. So these are data types. And like I said, they define what data is. They define how you're going to be storing it in memory. And they pertain particularly to the concept of variables. Now a variable is kind of like a box that holds a specific type of data or information. A variable allows me to keep track of numbers of any data type that I want in memory while my program is running. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a float and I'm going to call it age and I'm going to give it the initial value of 20. So here's how you create a variable. It's always the same formula. You go data type, space, and then you give it the name you want, space, and then you give it the assignment, 
and then you give it a semicolon. So you notice I followed this exactly. I created the data type of float, I gave it the name of age, and I set the assignment to equals 20. Now whenever you see this equal sign, it always means put whatever's on the right side of the equal sign into the left side. You can always kind of try to remember that. So this is just really basic creating a variable and storing a value in it in memory. So if I were to run my application right now, it would create this data in memory and store the number 20 in it, and then it would close. But we're not done here. So I'm going to actually modify this program now and add the ability for it to take whatever is inside the age variable and tell me the minimum dating age that that age can go. So there's this formula I found online where you it's like your age um, divided by 2 plus 7, I think. Age divided by 2 plus 7. I think that's the dating formula. So all we do is we go float minimum age equals parenthesis age divided by 2 close parenthesis plus 7 semicolon and you'll notice I use these parentheses just like in math they define order of operations so basically I say do this first before you do this and then you'll also notice that I use age casually like it's some kind of a term because that's exactly what it is it's like a mathematical term or a variable since I've set its value to 20 up here whenever I use age anywhere else in my program as long as it's defined within the scope, which scope is something we'll be talking about later. But basically, anywhere else in the program, whenever you see age, it'll be 20 because that's what I set it up here. So now if I go run my program, it'll create this variable called age, assign it 20, and then it will create this other variable called minimum age and do the calculation. And let's just see what happens. I'll go debug, start without debugging, and you'll notice nothing really happens. But secretly, stuff did happen on the back end in the computer's memory. It did this mathematical calculation and it stored it in memory. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how you can do some cool things with consoles. Now, we have this variable and then we have another variable. But what we do not have is a way to display it to the screen. And luckily in C Sharp, it's, there's a very easy way of displaying data of any type to the screen. You merely go console dot right line. Now, a few things to note right off the bat. Console is spelled with a capital C. That's very, very important. Um, case is important, especially in C Sharp. You have to spell everything with the proper capitals, the proper lower cases. The next thing to note is that when I press that period, the first thing that comes up is this box that shows me basically every single option that I am able to access, which is really cool. So you'll notice I could do, instead of right line, I could do console.write or I could console.set window size or set position or set error so there are all these options that I can access about the console and these are all built in they're called functions they basically allow us to perform a task and they're built into the system so I can go console.write line open parenthesis and as soon as I do that you'll notice it says one of 19 right here that means there are 19 different possible combinations of information that I can send into the console.write line. And you'll notice 7 of 19 is actually sending a float value. So basically what that means is I can give it this minimum age float value and it'll display it to the screen. So I just type in minimum age, close parenthesis, semicolon, and as soon as I do that, now when I go to debug, start without debugging, it says 17. So apparently for a 20 year old, 17 is the minimum age you can date. And that's all there is to basic data types and using some really basic functionality in the C Sharp programming language. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I will be making more very shortly. Uh, be sure to thumbs up the tutorial.